Hey everyone, so today I just wanted to take a look at a topic that is actually not that regularly covered that I think is actually quite interesting. So as part of making videos, as part of editing videos, one of the most important things is render time. So any time that you spend rendering, any time that you spend editing videos is time you can't spend doing something else. So I really want to take a look at sort of what benefits can be seen by incorporating CUDA acceleration into editing videos in Adobe Premiere. So in Adobe Premiere, there are two ways of rendering videos. So the Mercury playback engine, which is the rendering engine behind Premiere, can either use software acceleration via the CPU or can use CUDA and OpenGL acceleration via the graphics card. And I guess in some ways it's been known for a very long time that a high-end graphics card, for example, something like a GTX 980 or a GTX Titan, can outperform the best CPUs in terms of um, rendering times and rendering abilities. But what hasn't been covered as much is how lower end graphics cards can affect performance. So I've decided to look at sort of an interesting scenario today and pitch up my very high end 6 core 5820K overclocked to 4.4 gigahertz rendering using software acceleration against a very cheap GTA, uh, not GTX, GT630, GT630. So that's a card that's several generations old now. I think it's a Kepler card. It's um, around about 20 bucks used. So this is really interesting because I'm trying to see whether this $20 edition can genuinely improve render times and whether this might be the way to go rather than upgrading your CPU if you're after quicker render times for your videos. So stay tuned and we'll check out the results. Taking a look here, it's obviously no surprise that when we add the GPU, we get better rendering times, especially on my older system, which is 2600K. So using the CPU only, we can see that obviously the 5820K does a lot better than the 2600K, shaving off like half the render time. But even with the 5820K, when we add CUDA acceleration, we're able to shave off more time. And in fact, the amount of time that the 5820K with CUDA takes is the same as the amount of time that 2600K with CUDA takes. So I think the takeaway point from this is just how important the GPU is in rendering. So what can we take away from today's discussion? I think we can take away two main things. The first thing we can take away is that you don't always need the most powerful machine for video editing. So as I've shown today, the 2600K was released five years ago. You can find it used for barely any money at all still performs really well. In fact, in most video rendering tasks paired with the GT630, it performs as well as my 5820K. And that's extremely uh, extremely impressive because my 5820K is a brand new $500 processor, six cores. So I think that's something that's really important. So if you're looking to get into video editing, especially if you're not doing any special effects or any ray tracing or any complicated things, it's really good to have a look at these older platforms and see what they can offer. Now, the second thing I think we can take away is how important the graphics card is for video editing. So even a cheap graphics card, such as a GT630, can hammer my 5820K in video rendering. So if you're looking to improve your render times, and if you're on integrated graphics, whether that be you're on Intel integrated graphics or on a laptop and you only have integrated graphics, the most important thing you can do is get a graphics card. If you're still on a laptop, get a 2600K, get a GT630, you can do all that for 500 bucks and your video rendering times will be so much quicker. Now I know that there are a lot of things that I haven't really touched on um, in today's video, but the main point I wanted to make was just about video render times and how they can be improved with um, GPU acceleration. So thank you very much for tuning in and I hope you have a great day. So stay tuned for more videos from me. Thanks.